Hey YouTube, Mike with Mike's Mini Motors here again. Um, so today we are back to working on the Monstrosity Moto again. Um, and today we are putting a motor on this thing. We got the, the Predator motor I've got here. Um, so we can just slot this thing together and we should be able to drive it today as long as the weather holds out. Um, it's cold out there, but it's it's sunny and nice. So hopefully we can test that, test that out today. Um, but before we get to any of that stuff, what I'm going to do is I'll get the, grab the camera and get a little closer. I got the whole parts spread here so you guys can see exactly what's going to go into putting this engine on here. So let's get you guys a closer look. All right, so this is the part spread here. This is everything I'm going to need to get this Predator engine put into this mini bike. So first and foremost is this is the Predator 212cc engine from Harbor Freight. This is the non-hemi one just because that's what they had when I bought it, they didn't have the heavy ones in. Um, it's a brand new engine, but I did have to pull the carburetor off of it for another repair job I did. Um, just because I didn't want to order one, I have to wait. <laughs> but luckily for me, the the other Mega Moto mini bike is getting an upgrade, so I, I pulled all of this stuff off of it. This is the carburetor, the air filter, the adapter, and then even picked up a vent kit from GoPowerSports.com. Um, we also need to switch out the exhaust. So I got this uh, trumpet header and I pulled the silencer off of the other Mega Moto mini bike also because I got a, a smaller one since that one's gonna be more performance based. I got the bigger one to quiet this guy down a little bit better. And then this here is the mounting plate to get this engine put on there. And I went ahead, I did already drill out the engine plate on the mini bike for this year. I just took some measurements off of the the original Megamoto I built while I was pulling the carburetor off and just did all that then. Um, so we'll get that bolted on there so we can get the engine actually mounted. And then last but not least, we have uh, our Max Torque clutch and then also our chain guide cover. So first things first is I'm gonna get this thing opened up, pulled out of the box and pull off the exhaust and whatever else I need to. Like I said, there's no carburetor on it so it's pretty much gonna be pull the exhaust off and then I'll probably bolt, actually no, I'm gonna leave this off until I get the engine in there. Uh, just make, give myself a little more space. So we'll get this opened up, torn down what we need to, and then worked on the engine plate. So here we go. Well, I was mistaken, I forgot that I had ordered a new carburetor for this thing and it wasn't going to be in time for that repair job so that's the, the one that came in later I put it back on here so anyways that one's going to come off and just be a spare carburetor for me for now because this one's already jetted for stage one and I think I am going to go ahead and get the carburetor on there I just won't put the filter on yet because um, I got to do the vents and stuff like that so that should be easier to do now than when it's crammed in here and so uh yeah I'll show you guys how to get this carburetor changed out all right, so these stock carburetors are really easy to get off. It's just the two 10 millimeters, and then you got your couple of vacuum hoses and your fuel line. So you just zip these off. And then the cover comes off. Pop off that vacuum line. This one stayed attached, but it actually goes here. But my vent kit came with oops, another little section of tube, so I won't even be using that. Okay, and then we grab some pliers to get this fuel line off. Just a little clip, pinch. lines off since this is a new engine there's no gas is gonna dump out on me and then you gotta take up your throttle linkages so the one little spring just pull it up a little bit which then you can take the let me see if I can get the camera a little closer actually for you guys all right so here's the throttle setup like I said I already pulled this uh, spring off of here and it just goes into this little hole and then your throttle linkage here you just need to Straighten this out Oop. as much as you can, and it just pops straight up. 
because if it's turned like this here, it's, it's locked in, but just like that. And then once you do there, just wiggle her off. And that's it. And then the install is just to reverse that as, you know, with just replacing it with the stock carb, but that's all we're doing on this guy. So let me get that thing slapped back on. Well, there's the uh, carburetor and adapter or filter adapter put on there. Makes it really easy, just those two tens. But one thing is the, especially when you pull the stock airbox off, this stud here is longer than this one. Um, some kits I've seen come with a, a stud you can replace on here, but the ones I've heard just don't. Um, but one thing, I, since I don't have a deep well 10 millimeter, what I do is I put it on there and then I just get my socket or impact or my ratchet or impact, whichever I'm using. And you just kind of barely get it set in there where it's not locked in, but at least drive it. So one little thing I've done, um, but next we've got the filter kit or vent kit. And it just comes with these five parts, smaller filter for the gas line here for the gas tank vent. And then the larger one here for the crankcase. And then this little tube that goes in there. And so it's just, Flap it together. I'll show you real quick. So you take the bigger one and the tube, put them on there. And this is their like hose clamps as a zip tie. <laughs> there. And then also this guy, I don't need to be this long anymore. So I'm going to cut it down to be right here. So the filter will just hang right there. And then this guy just presses in the existing tube. And then your zip tie. And then this guy here just pushes here into the valve cover. Just like that. Not very tight though. Okay, I changed my mind. I'm not gonna use their tube. I'm gonna reuse the one out of the stock air box just because it's properly sized for here. This one's actually a little bit too small. So that's kind of crappy, but it is what it is. So I'll get that switched out and trim these zip ties. And then two bolts will get this exhaust off. And then it's on to the actual bike to get this thing mounted up. So here's how she looks right before we're ready to put her on. You can see you got the carb changed out and this already has the stage one jet in it. The filter adapter, I did put a piece of paper towel just so nothing goes in. Our two vents. And then got the old exhaust off here and then I just put the nuts back on there just so they don't get lost until I get the header put on. Um, and those were actually a 13 millimeter. That's why I had to go back to the toolbox. I always think they were 12s, but they're a 13. And then since we cut this hose down, this little tie or whatever you want to call it that was here, I just pulled it off because otherwise it's just sitting there for no reason. So now we can get the engine plate set up to get this put in. So here you can see the engine plate and I've already modified it. The, these slotted holes and also these guys and those guys were all here already. These are the ones that I added. And like I said, I took the measurements off of my other bike just because it worked before. So um, I'll measure these again because I forgot what they were. I did this a little bit ago. So you guys, if you wanted to do it the same way, you know the measurements. So I've got, and I'm gonna do this in millimeters just because that's the system I like to use. <laughs> so from this edge, and I'm on the, I guess you could call it the driver's side, <laughs> the, uh, the left side of the, the bike right now. So from the left side, the holes in are 31 millimeters. On the right side, 
They are 48 millimeters from here to here. And then I remember how I did this part. This is <laughs> finding a good spot to measure from. I think I went from the uh, peg bar and that is 58 millimeters from the bar to the front holes. And then 147 from the front to back here. So if you guys want to do it the same way I'm doing it, there's the measurements. But now I'm going to get the engine plate. I don't remember from last time if I can put the plate on first and then the engine on, or if I got to put the plate on the engine and then put it on. So a little bit of a trial and error here. One other thing I wanted to point out to you guys before I do the hyperlapse is uh, I did these on the last time. They're just little uh, spacers or 10 milliliter or something like that um, that I put underneath the plate because if you don't, some people have to take, this is one of the, the oil drain plugs. They cut it off so that it, this end you can move far enough forward because it will hit the, the bar here. So if I raise it up just enough, then this plug clears that so I can still use it as a drain. Um, and that just helped things line up a lot easier for me last time. So just want to throw that out there real quick for you guys. All right, so pulled the motor back out because I quickly remembered this guy has to come off for now. The other one I ended up extending it back, but it kept breaking, I think just because the leverage point changed that I'm gonna pull it off and at this point, I don't know if I'll put it back on, but I'll get that off real quick and then we'll try getting this engine on again. Okay, she's in there. Um, <laughs> it's always kind of a pain putting these ones on there just to get all the bolts to line up. And if you guys were wondering what I was doing with the pieces of tape, the bolts that were facing up can tip over when I'm trying to put the engine in. So I just put this across the, the channel to try to keep it so it wouldn't fall over. It seemed to help a little bit, but it wasn't ideal. <laughs> but it's all in there. I got everything kind of just snug, not even snug down, just kind of attached because once we get the clutch and everything else on there, we're gonna have to align it. And so like, the nice thing about this plate is it gives you an adjustment. I'm cockeyed now. <laughs> there we go. And then even uh, front to back a bit. But with these Mega Motos, the, this frame here, the carburetor tries to hit. So even on my other bike, I had to have it like, put the filter on and then push it back into that. So it was a pain, but it works. Cool, so now we can go ahead and get the filter installed and the header. Actually, no, not the header yet. We'll get the filter installed. All right, so the reason I had said not the header yet is because this trumpet one, you can see, has the big flare at the end. And to put the silencer on, that's gotta go. So I'm gonna chop that off real quick and then we can get this on. Okay, so now that we got the header on and the air filter, we're next on to the clutch. And the way that the line, like at least the gear on the clutch lines up with my sprocket the best on this one, even on my other mini bike, was to put the sprocket inward like that. And these can be mounted this way or this way, just whatever you need. And, uh, but with this clutch, the keyway is only that deep. Let's see if you can see that. Like an inch or so. And so the keyway that came with, that was in the engine is twice as long, so I'm gonna have to cut this thing down real quick, but then we'll get right back to this. 
All right, it's even better. I already found a kiwi that I had cut down and it's the perfect size. So I just cleaned up the one end that had a couple of burrs and stuff on it to where it had been cut. So now we go there, get our kiwi in here. And then you need to get a 5 16 24 bolt and a big washer. And then that goes in here on the end. And then there, once I tighten that thing down, clutch is ready to go. All right, so the clutch is on here, good to go. Um, I did try to kind of line up the sprockets. I just have this big rod that I used and then snug down the, the motor so that it's ready for the chain. And uh, But before we do the chain, I need to replace the tensioner because that's all that was here for the tensioner before. <laughs> so I got to put this whole thing in and then find my chain and get it wrapped on there. I guess I didn't realize I didn't have any 35 chain that was brand new. So right now I just, I found a section that'll work for this. It's, it needs to be replaced, but at least be good for testing. Um, so last thing I'm going to do over here is get the clutch cover bolted on. It's just two bolts here and that's it. <laughs> um, I'll get this on and then tomorrow when I get back to working on this, I just got to hook up the throttle and then yeah. Fuel it up and put some oil in it and I think we're ready to go. So yeah, let me get that bolted on and then get to it tomorrow. <laughs> 